And uh, in, that, in those three years, how's, that, how's tourism changed and fluctuated? I think uh, the political challenges that we've had have uh, seen some, some troughs, but the, the, the good thing for, for Phuket is that it's always bounced back quickly. People understand it's a, it's a safe destination, it's not Bangkok. So the airport closure that we had uh, was the biggest effect, but uh, we had a good, uh, good high season last year, uh, or this year I should say. And uh, all, th all things going well, it looks like uh, the end of the year will be good too. Okay, excellent. And how have your occupancy rates been looking during that time, the last six months, 12 months or so? We've been fortunate because we've got a, quite a good value proposition in the market at the moment. So we've run in the mid-90s for the last few months, which is uh, against what the rest of the market's doing. Um, we have found that uh, the numbers are still coming to Phuket, but the value's quite, not quite there. But again, that looks like it's coming back towards the end of the year. Okay. And as uh, numbers of visitor arrivals to Phuket as a whole, have they been down in the last year? On the last year, actually, surprisingly, they're up. Okay. Um, but again, it's a different type of traveller. Um, and we are hoping that that, that top end comes back. Okay. And uh, what do you see happening over the next 12 months or so? I think that uh, if everything remains stable, that we'll, uh, we'll see business uh, picking up and uh, value coming back. Uh, currencies in Australia getting stronger makes it easier for them to, to come out here. Uh, the States is, uh, is, is beginning to show signs of recovery, which is our, our home base. Um, and the real key is what's going to happen in Europe. Uh, is, is the UK uh, going to come out the other end uh, as they expect to or not? And, and what, what can happen in Phuket to, to really push things forward? Things are going well, but how can they make it better? I think Phuket needs to focus a little bit on the mice market. I think we need some infrastructure in regards to the mice market. Uh, the hotels have been investing and uh, the Laguna Resort has invested in the, the new latitude function uh, facility here. But uh, I think we need some public spending on some, some proper facility for the mice, uh, mice business and we need to look at the airport. The airport work really does need to go ahead. Okay. Um, and, and in your resort here at Outrigger, uh, what's the balance of the leisure traveller to the business traveller? Yeah, we're 95% we're leisure uh, at the moment. We pick up the odd mice group, um, but the size of the property, we're, we're just 68 keys. Um, we're very much more focused towards the leisure family groups. Okay, and does that reflect the start of your property and, and your sales campaigns, or is that more a reflection of just the, the movement of tourists into Phuket? I think that's indicative of the market at the moment. Um, and we actually are seeing some inquiries for the, for the mice business out of Hong Kong and Singapore. And we've just launched a new meeting package where we convert one of our four bedroom houses into a great meeting room that people can use the gardens and the pools, etc. as well. So a different edge on meetings, yeah. Okay. Now, Outrigger has some pretty big expansion plans for Asia. Uh, can you just enlighten us as to what they are and tell us how your, your property is going to fit into that? Yeah, with our, our regional head offices here in Phuket, so definitely this property will be a, a showpiece for us as we, we deal with the, the new developers, we always uh, show them through what we're doing here. We've got uh, an existing property in Bali which is uh, performing well in Seminyak. We've got another property that we're building up in the Bukit Peninsula uh, with the developer. Uh, we've got a, a signed deal in Vietnam, which is a couple of we years away from opening, 300 keys. We've got uh, 500 keys in Hainan Island, China, which is uh, about two and a half years away. And we're looking at three or four properties in the greater Phuket area, and hopefully some announcements by the end of the year. Koh Samui is on the radar screen, uh, and, uh, and uh, we've just opened a great new property in Noosa, Australia. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're still looking for opportunities, perhaps in, in Bangkok and more in Vietnam and Ho Chi Minh as well. And uh, I assume the business model in Hawaii is very strong. Will there be any changes that you'll be introducing to cater for the Asian market in particular? Yeah, we've, um, we've had to, and it's a wonderful part of our company that the head office understands that Hawaii and Asia are a different, uh, different business model. And uh, the people who are, who are running out rigor uh, are seasoned uh, Asian veterans out here. Um, the Hawaii is a very stable model based on North American and Japanese uh, trade, where Asia you've got up to 20 different source markets coming into a, a destination. Um, what we've been able to bring to Asia is the, the condominium model. Uh, we're very good at running condominium strata tidal hotels, and so we can run full service hotels or those strata tidal hotels as well.